Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video, you should be able to describe the Maxwell-Boltzmann curve of particle energies. You should then be able to use the Maxwell-Boltzmann curve to explain the effect of temperature and catalysts on the rate of chemical reactions. Over the last few videos, we've been looking at the rate of chemical reactions. We've seen that in order for a reaction to take place, the reactant molecules must collide with enough energy to start breaking chemical bonds. And scientists call this the activation energy. Now, if we measure the energy of all the molecules in a gas, a liquid, or a solution, we get the curve I'm showing you here. This curve is called the Maxwell Boltzmann distribution. There are several important points about this that you need to learn. Firstly, the curve starts at 0, 0, in other words, the origin. What this means is that there are no molecules with zero energy. Secondly, some molecules have a very high energy. In fact, the curve does not touch the x-axis at high energies. So this tells us that there's no maximum energy that molecules could have. And lastly, the area under the curve tells us the total number of molecules in the system. Now, the most probable energy is directly under the peak of the curve, but the mean energy is slightly to the right of this. That's because particles at very high energies skew the mean to the right. OK, now I'm showing the activation energy for a particular reaction. Remember that in order to collide effectively and react, molecules must have at least this energy. These molecules are represented by the area under the curve to the right of the activation energy, and I'm showing that in green. Now we saw in the last video that catalysts provide an alternative reaction pathway with a lower activation energy. So I'm showing you here the activation energy in the presence of a catalyst, and remember that we abbreviate that as EC. All of the molecules which now have at least this energy can collide effectively and react. And again, I'm representing these molecules by the green area under the curve. As you can see, this is a much greater number of molecules than for the uncatalyzed reaction. And this explains why the rate of reaction increases in the presence of a catalyst. Now, another way to increase the rate of reaction is to increase the temperature. I'm showing you here the effect of increasing temperature on the Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution curve. Here, T2 represents a higher temperature than T1. You'll notice that at higher temperatures, there are more particles with very high energies. We can also see that the most probable energy increases, but the number of particles with the most probable energy falls. Students sometimes find this idea challenging. You need to remember that the area under the curve represents the total number of molecules. We have not changed the number of molecules, we've only increased the temperature. So the area under the curve cannot change when we increase the temperature. Therefore, at higher temperatures, the curve shifts to the right, but the height of the peak falls. Now, there are two effects to increasing the temperature. Firstly, the molecules are moving faster, so the frequency of all collisions increases. Secondly, at higher temperatures, we can see that the number of molecules with at least the activation energy has increased substantially. And again, I'm showing that in green. So now, a much greater proportion of the collisions are effective and result in a reaction. And this increase in effective collisions explains why the rate of reaction increases at higher temperatures. OK, so hopefully now you can describe and explain the Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution curve.